I'm a slave. <laughs> I bet you didn't know that, but yes, I am a slave. Um, my time is not my own. Uh, if I don't show up for work every day and do what they tell me all day long, there are serious consequences. Um, I have uh, the possibility before me in, in that circumstance of losing my property, losing some of my rights, and um, essentially falling down in society's estimation, being punished in a sense, even if passively by society. Now that's hyperbole, maybe, um, by modern standards, because we've reevaluated what we mean by slavery. The ancient Greeks and Romans, the classical um, peoples, uh, would have actually said, yeah, you're a slave. Um, anybody who can't come and go as they please any hour of the day is a slave. Anybody who has to take orders from somebody else is a slave. Um, <clears throat> you, uh, you're, you know, the, the, I think the German word, um, if I understand how it's translated, Obrigheit, uh, state of affairs whereby there are those who give orders and those who obey, is what the classical, the people of classical antiquity would have understood as the slave-master relationship. And don't think for a second I'm getting into slave and master ethics here, the Nietzschean thing. No, I'm not. This has nothing to do with that. Um, <clears throat> what I'm saying is we haven't, in a sense, abolished slavery. Now, the interesting thing about this is, of course, that the people who are my masters are themselves slaves. Because, if anything, the strictures placed upon them are even more um, tight than those placed upon me. Uh, they, have to, they have to surrender even more of their own personal autonomy in order to push me around, I guess, all day at work. Again, the way that I get bossed around at work by my, you know, like as just any old flunky in a bureaucracy has to do, has to endure all day long, would have been intolerable to a Roman citizen, or to, uh, or at least to a Roman citizen of dignitas, of great sort of personal self-estimation. Um, so I don't think that we've really abolished slavery the way that we tell ourselves that we have. We've simply said that <clears throat> so long as there's no there's nobody out there beating me with a stick, I'm not actually a slave. Well, not all slaves in classical antiquity, or even not all slaves in the uh, deep south in the old days, were handled that way. What we now call slavery is what I would call brute, coercive slavery. Um, that's the slavery that we have categorically abolished, or at least in theory we have abolished it. We have decided that you never put somebody in shackles and say you go down there in that mine or out into those fields and you slave away for me all day long and I'll just keep you alive and I won't beat the hell out of you with a, a baseball bat and that's your reward. That does seem to have been abolished or it's well on its way towards abolition because the 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 intellectual underpinnings for that have all been attacked. Now, <clears throat> have all been questioned and we've thrown them out and we've also morally attacked that and we've said that that is wrong. I think, I think most people have said that we've ended slavery because it was immoral to enslave people. It was a bad thing to do. We feel guilty if we own slaves. Now, I would say that may be possible. But I would say also that, um, like some people say, okay, if we're going to take guilt out of the equation, um, then aren't we going to, aren't we going to sort of like, what else are we going to base our ethical system on? Like, wouldn't like we would never have abolished this abomination called slavery if we didn't have, quote unquote, healthy consciences. If we didn't have a healthy sense that this was simply wrong. It was the wrong thing to do. I think that that was a large element in it, yes. <clears throat> but I think a lot of it, and I'm not trying to condemn the human race for this, I 
think that um, <clears throat> I think a lot of the, our reasoning behind abolishing slavery was simply that it is a fundamentally inefficient system. It doesn't work. Um, anyone who's ever seen the movie Amistad, or if you've uh, watched Spartacus, um, or if you've um, ever seen any graphic depictions of human slavery and the human slave trade, <clears throat> Let me assure you that what you've seen of what we would call the horrors of slavery are, even in, say, a movie that is as shocking, say, as Amistad, barely scratches the surface of how horrific a fate it is to become a slave. Um, in order to make you efficient as a slave, you have to be broken. You have to be broken in a way that turns essentially turns you into a machine. Um, when you catch a person, and, and nobody wants to be a slave from the beginning, uh, you have to sort of force people into a mindset that turns them into slaves. Um, you have to humiliate people, seriously, brutally humiliate them. Um, if they're women, you have to rape them repeatedly, preferably gang rape them uh, in public to make sure that they understand that their body is not their own. They must understand this um, in order to be efficient slaves, in order to be slaves. Because eventually, um, when they are set to their function of whatever it is they're supposed to do, working in a plantation system or digging ore or something like that in a mine, they have to be in a situation where they can be controlled by a smaller number of people. This is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> um, controlling people is extremely inefficient. Um, it's a difficult thing to do, especially people who don't want to be slaves. Now, one could say that from the opening statement that I made, that I'm a slave, <clears throat> that I'm saying that slavery isn't really so bad. But what I'm saying is that isn't complete, that, that's not the full story of slavery. There's slavery of the kind I had, which is, I have, which is kind of, there are antecedents to this in, in slavery in the old days. It was the free man or the the um, <clears throat> the uh, person who sort of signed on for a fixed term to do what they, you know, what they were supposed to do. Um, uh, say, like in, in the ancient world, if you were an educated person, you could sell yourself into slavery for 10 years um, to get out of debt, say. And while you were a slave, there were only certain things you've agreed in advance. There's only certain things that your master can do to you but he can force you to do what you agreed to do for the next 10 years. In other words, educate his kids, um, follow him around, uh, run errands for him, that kind of thing. That existed, and in a sense, that's the role that I play in society. I have agreed to do what my boss says. In return, he's agreed to give me something. So we haven't abolished slavery in that sense. What we've abolished is this business of turning humans into brutalized machines. Now, the reason why I say that it's inefficient is, of course, A, you can't, it's very, very, very difficult to break human beings to the point where they're willing to tolerate the kind of existence that chattel brutalized slavery entails. They're, they're, how do you get somebody to accept his fate as a plantation or a mining slave? It's almost, <clears throat> it's almost impossible. His entire being says, I don't want to do this. So there's the constant, um, ever-present danger of rebellion. Slave rebellions have taken place throughout history, and they have shaken every society that has had too much slavery to its core. Slave rebellions in the deep south of the United States. Slave rebellions in Rome. Spartacus. <clears throat> 
um, uh, slave rebellions in the West Indies. Uh, the ones that took place in some of the French colonies were particularly harsh and brutal and full of reprisals. Uh, because you brutalize people, you deliberately brutalize people, you, you know, inflict horrific violence upon them in order to turn them into efficient slaves. And of course, they seem to think, you know, they get the idea, oh, okay, that's the way life is. So, all right, somebody's going to be either beating me or I'm going to be beating them. So as soon as I get the upper hand, of course, well, <laughs> guess what I do to the plantation owner and his wife and children? <clears throat> I, I just act in a way that the slave system has programmed me to act as basically something that's not even an animal. It's worse than an animal. Um, a completely brutalized <clears throat> entity that I must be in order to be a slave. The whole system doesn't work. There's the the um, the science of breaking people and turning them into um, efficient plantation workers or mine slaves is gigantic. You need people who know what they're doing to carry this out. <clears throat> it's not just a case of you grab somebody from randomly, throw them out in the field and say, you know, start working. Um, you need people who know how to manage them because if you've got a hundred slaves out there and they all speak the same language and none of them have been sufficiently broken and uh, and they can communicate with each other they're human beings remember <laughs> it won't be long before they're, they're, they've got a pretty efficient system of resistance conspiracy taking place communications with all the other um, plantations in the vicinity and they say look I don't want to be slaves. None of us want to be slaves. It seems a no-brainer. We should gang up on the masters. People knew that this was always going to be a problem, and you had so many tricks. You had a elaborate system of snitching and intelligence gathering and and playing mind games with your slaves. You tried to always um, throw them together and, and provoke dissension among them uh, to get them suspicious of each other. You'd put together slaves from hostile backgrounds. In ancient Rome, you'd try and get, you try and mix Gauls and Germans, French and Germans, in your slave gangs, because these groups hated each other, and if, if they hated each other, they'd spend more time fighting among themselves, etc., etc. The whole thing um, was massively inefficient. Um, and slave, slavery was on its way out long before we discovered this, that it was inefficient. It was only when we started to sort of have these economies of scale, i.e. the sugar industry uh, or the cotton industry or things like that, a globalized sort of economy where slavery experienced something of a revival, but even then it started to show its inefficiencies again. Um, people who are working for an incentive produce more than people who are working to avoid the whip. Um, and there's a lot less danger. If I own a nice big plantation house surrounded by potentially murderously hostile slaves, I'm far less secure, my property is far less secure than if I own a nice big house surrounded by reasonably contented, say, sharecroppers or something. Uh, the sharecropper might have a fairly miserable life, but I can't go out there in the middle of the night just because I feel like it and rape his wife. Um, whereas in the old system, the slave system, you can. In fact, you actually, it, it was your right, and not only was it your right, but it was probably your a smart thing to do because you're, again, you're degrading your slaves to make sure that they understand that they are less than humans and that they're, you know, they're completely and utterly at my mercy and I can impose my will on them uh, as I see fit. Slavery is just a ridiculously inefficient mechanism. <clears throat> we don't need guilt to see that um, slavery is not where we want to be as a society. Um, it doesn't make rational sense for us to have slaves. I challenge anybody to come up with a scenario whereby, uh, even in a completely heartless calculated world where it actually makes better sense to have slaves than it does to have willing labor or willing sort of underlings. It never 
ever does. Um, there's a reason why slavery is so colossally inhuman. It's because you're trying to turn a human being into something that a human being is not. Uh, this People don't want to live under a constant state of coercion. It's simply not in our nature to be like that. Um, and always there's the spark of, gee, I wonder if there's anything more to life than this, than being uh, smacked on the back with a thick cane and sweating my guts out all day long with no rewards at all, except for maybe being thrown together in a room with a, a female slave that I'll never see again for the next six months uh, to sort of let off a little bit of steam. That's my life. I don't know. I don't like this. <laughs> Um, so, <clears throat> the argument was, or the question that, what, that, that arose was, what do we do when we take guilt out of our ethics? Won't we suddenly turn into Nazis? I don't believe that we will. Um, the Nazis themselves proved just how inefficient coercion is. They said, okay, world, we're going to conquer you and turn you all into slaves. They said this blatantly. And they especially said it to the Russians. Russians, we're gonna we're gonna exterminate you people. We're gonna exterminate the Jews, the Russians, the Gypsies. Uh, we're gonna exterminate uh, most of the Poles and the Ukrainians and everything. Okay, here we come. Well, <laughs> duh. <laughs> the Russians fought like beasts with their backs to the wall. <laughs> they had no choice. They were put in a position where they had no choice but to resist with everything that they had. Um, <clears throat> people don't want to be slaves. They never have, and they never will. Nazism was a fundamentally inefficient system. It's much better <clears throat> to do what the Germans are doing now. You go into these uh, countries like uh, Southeastern Europe, Eastern Europe, you open a factory, you hire people, <laughs> you enslave them in that way, you, um, <clears throat> you invest in their economy, you become this sort of international business elite that now dominates Eastern and East Central Europe. German speaking, of course. Um, and not only that, you've sort of implicated everybody in the region in their own slavery, I guess. But it's not what we would recognize as slavery. It is negotiation. Negotiation is what is the alternative that we have in our ethical system to guilt and or punishment or coercion. We have negotiation. Now, a lot of people are going to say, ah, great, okay, you're talking about Ayn Rand again. No, I'm not. <laughs> because we negotiate among each other for things like governments, taxes, creating a state, prisons, libel laws, um, police forces, fire departments, this sort of thing. Uh, all this stuff is negotiated. <clears throat> uh, the Ayn Rand type point of view is the state is just some vague entity up there that has some powerful existence all of its own that's somehow separate from human affairs and imposes its will upon us. The libertarian and objectivist uh, sort of ethos mystifies the state to the point where it, it, it really is, it looks from their point of view, omnipotent. The state is only what we call the normal negotiations that any society undertakes to regulate itself. That is far more efficient than guilt, and it's far less harmful in the long term. You don't need guilt to abolish slavery. You just have to look at the system and see it is colossally inefficient. The only thing that it, it might have as an advantage over um, an incentive-based slave system like the one that I exist in <clears throat> is that it enables the masters to truly believe themselves to be absolute masters um, with absolute power of life and death over everybody which in my case they don't have. There's, a, there's limits to their authority over me. Now, some people would say that that is 
a, a, a valuable commodity, um, that power is something that's inherent in us and the desire for it is inherent in us. I would agree with that, but there's all kinds of desires in us that we understand are disruptive and we regulate them through negotiation. We say you can impose your power on somebody under these circumstances, not under these circumstances, or not to that extent, because we've seen what happens when we do this. We get no society. When you have a slave revolt, when you have a society that's based on slavery, and you have a slave revolt that actually succeeds, even temporarily, you've pretty much abolished society. You're back in a state of Hobbesian anarchy. Um, and we have decided, and I think rightly, or at least rationally, that we don't want Hobbesian chaos. You don't need guilt to do the right thing. You simply need common sense. <laughs> this one is probably going to provoke a bit of controversy.